And he says here that we need to take our stand against the devil's schemes. That is the word methods. What are the methods of the devil? What are the devil's methods for trying to get us to forget or reject what we know to be true? Keep a finger here in Ephesians 6. Turn to the book of Genesis. Let's take a look at the methods that the enemy used when he came at Eve. Genesis chapter 3. Okay, so this is chapter 3, verse 1. It says, Now the serpent was more crafty than any of the wild animals the Lord God had made. And he said to the woman, Did God really say you must not eat from any tree in the garden? What is Satan doing there? What? Putting question in the mind about what? Yeah, about the Word of God, right? Uh, it's doubting God's Word. And notice, what does he say here? He says, did God really say that you must not eat from any tree in the garden? So, doubting the goodness of God by emphasizing the restrictions instead of the freedoms. How many trees did God say they couldn't eat of? One. How many trees could they eat of? Everything else, right? <laughs> and how often does the enemy succeed in doing that to us, right? God says, I'll give you all of this, just not that. And what do we focus on? Exactly. But I want that. I want that, right? Okay, he goes on here, verses 2 through 4. The woman said to the serpent, we may eat fruit from the trees in the garden, but God did say you must not eat fruit from the tree that is in the middle of the garden, and you must not touch it or you will die. You will certainly not die, the serpent said to the woman. What's Satan doing there? Okay, lying. Yeah. Uh, directly refuting the word of God. Yeah. Yeah, challenging the word of God. And then verse 5 says, For God knows that when you eat from it, your eyes will be opened and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. What's Satan doing here? Yeah, tempting. It's this looks like you, you had said earlier, Larry. It looks attractive. It'll be just like him. That'll be awesome. That would be awesome. Huh? Okay, back to Ephesians 6. Another way I often think of Satan's methods is that he tries to distract Christians. Okay, he tries to get us to, to run to things, to be busy with, things that we don't need to be busy with. Um, how many of you ever, how many of in your life have ever looked back and realized you got too busy to really be white hot for Christ? Yeah, yeah. And they can be great things, right? I mean, they can, they can be wonderful things. You know, one of the things that they always talk about, the danger of the church, is that the church can have so many activities that people are so busy with church stuff that they never rub shoulders with people who don't know Jesus. So he tries to distract Christians. He tries to discourage Christians. And then we, we're discouraged. Something or so, some, you know, some, some circumstance or something discourages us in the Christian life. It's not a, not a good witness. Not where we should be. And then the third thing is he tries to destroy the witness of the Christian. Right? Once, once sin comes in, what does he want us to do? He wants us to question whether God could really forgive us that sin. Question whether God really wants us. Am I so dirty that God would never accept me back? He distracts us, he discourages us, and he seeks to destroy our witness. So we are to take our stand. The way we do battle, the way we do spiritual warfare is taking our stand in knowing what we believe, what we trust, what our passion is. And he says here in, in verses 10 through 12, he says, the strength or taking our stand against the devil's schemes, is being strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. And that means continually being made strong in the Lord. And remember, Paul started this letter by reminding us that we have the power of the resurrection in us by his Holy Spirit. 